All right, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, next up we have Dia Maju, who is going to talk about how he has analyzed the ASN graph topology to look for evil on the internet. Thank Let's you. Give us a big welcome. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. So uh, my name is Dia Majoub, and I'm a senior security researcher at OpenDNS. And today I'm going to tell you about uh, sweeping the IP space and hunting for evil uh, on the internet. So my main focus is, is on analyzing, analyzing the DNS traffic we have and all kinds of uh, IP space we are able to uh, get our hand on. So typically like routing tables and that kind of thing. So uh, how about the agenda? So I'll start, about, I'll start with a brief introduction about OpenDNS, like some of the technical aspects, and then I'll dive directly into the research aspect. So we'll discuss the ASN graph, and then how we investigate certain suspicious neighborhoods in it. And we'll introduce a new concept we call sibling peripheral ASNs. And then we'll get into the second main part of the talk, which is exploring uh, suspicious sub-allocated ranges and how they are being abused by uh, criminals. And then with that extra intelligence you get, you can predict the IP infrastructure that will be used by uh, bad actors. And then finally, there's like a growing trend, which is using uh, compromised domains and injecting them with subdomains and then uh, pointing them to IPs to deliver all kinds of attacks. So OpenDNS has a worldwide presence. We have 23 data centers uh, on four continents. Uh, <clears throat> and that allows us to see a lot of DNS traffic. It's mainly uh, recursive and authoritative. So recursive is between the client and, uh, so we sit in the middle and then we are a recursive DNS. The clients will ask us the question, what's the IP address, let's say, of a certain domain, and then we'll talk to the authoritative and then we'll give the answers back if there's no caching in our resolvers. So uh, this allows us to see the, the two types of traffic on the internet. So thanks to that, we are able to build all kinds of models. But the, the problem of today we're trying to solve is that uh, for detecting like maliciousness on the internet, there are a lot of uh, current kind of uh, systems, they rely on, on classical reputation uh, kind of methods or heuristics. And they usually assign scores to IPs, BGP prefixes, or ASNs because th those are basically the granularities of, the, of how to explore the IP space. And then they count the number of domains or IPs that are being flagged as malicious, and then you assign uh, some kind of a score depending on the heuristic uh, you apply. However, uh, we wanted to adopt a different approach, and for that, we wanted to look at some qualitative and behavioral aspects of how to of, of how these uh, IP uh, kind of uh, elements are being used, and also some, some aspects of the hosting infrastructure and how it's uh, kind of structured. And then the other part is that uh, we wanted to use uh, unconventional granularities. So uh, one of them is to abstract away from the ASN and look at the neighborhood of a certain ASN, and the other one is to drill down deeper than the BGP prefix and look at sub-allocated ranges within uh, big prefixes. And that gives us a very interesting visibility. So these are like the two pillars of the study, so the ASN graph and then the sub-allocated ranges. So let's talk about the ASN graph. So the ASN graph is basically the representation of the internet. So the internet is a network of networks, and an ASN is an autonomous system number. It uh, represents a collection of uh, you know, IP ranges, we'll call them BGP prefixes, because that's the protocol used by routers to exchange routing data. And uh, if you have a set of uh, BGP prefixes that are run by a, uh, a unique administrative entity, and they share a certain routing topology or certain routing like um, structure, then you can define them as belonging to the same ASN. So usually ISPs will go and register an AS number, and then that way they can uh, peer with other ASNs or ISPs, and then they start advertising their IP space, and that's how routing happens on the internet. So this is like a nice picture of the ASN network uh, built with uh, the help of my colleague Thibaut, who is in the room right there. Now, how can we build this ASN graph? So with that, for that, you can use the BGP routing tables. So if you have a big, uh, you know, worldwide presence, like in the case of OpenDNS, or if you are like a big CDN or Google, for instance, you have uh, a lot of routers across the globe, and then 
they will be exchanging the, those routing tables, and then you can consolidate them and have that picture of the internet. Or you could use like some uh, publicly available sources like route views, for instance. And uh, currently there are around 500,000 BGP prefixes on the internet, the public internet space, and then uh, belonging to about 46,000 plus uh, ASNs. <clears throat> now some of the useful sources to use, like I mentioned route views, so they have a dump of all of the uh, uh, routing tables uh, since 2000, I believe. So you could basically build a, a historical uh, BGP database, if you may. There's also a CIDR report, so it gives you an idea about uh, every ASN, what are the upstream and downstream uh, peers that he has. So that gives you an idea about what kind of relationships he has in, in advertising routes and how to uh, you know, become public and visible on the internet. And then finally, Hurricane Electric, they have a very interesting website because you can get all kinds of information about IPs, prefixes, or ASNs. So these are, again, some sources that can help you kind of uh, uh, carry on your research. So let's get into some detail. So what's the ASN graph? It's a directed graph where nodes are basically the AS numbers. And then you build a directed edge between uh, an ASN and every uh, upstream provider. So in this case, we take a line from uh, the routing table. And the ones we care about are the fields in red. So the 67 dot 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 slash 19, that's basically a prefix. It belongs to OpenDNS. And in the next field, you will have an AS path. So that tells you that uh, the last one to the right is the AS number of OpenDNS. And then from the vantage point, like from where we took this entry, to reach the, that prefix that belongs to OpenDNS's AS number, you'll have to go through the AS numbers 5413 and then 3356. So that tells you uh, kind of a suggested route to uh, route packets from somewhere in the internet to, the, uh, to any IP that belongs to that uh, prefix. And then uh, that's one example of how to build a, a directed edge using that entry. So since the routing table will have a huge amount of those entries, then you can accumulate those and build an entire picture of the ASN graph. Now, uh, with that, once we build the graph, we propose the model, uh, detection model based on the ASN graph exploration. We call it uh, the sibling peripheral nodes concept. And then I'll explain it in a bit. Uh, you just have to bear in mind that this, this is what we see here. Uh, it's basically uh, 48361, that's an upstream uh, provider for all of the, the guys at the top. So those are like all peers, uh, sorry, they're all siblings because they share the same parent. And then they are peripheral because they have no downstream uh, peers. So they're kind of on the outskirts of the internet. <clears throat> now this is a video, I will not uh, get to, into details, but it, it's in our open graffiti uh, kind of tool that we uh, open sourced during Black Hat this year. And it allows you to load like the entire BGP data to build the ASN graph. And then you can apply the SPN model and uh, kind of explore certain shady neighborhoods of the, of the internet. And then I will explain how the shady neighborhood looks like. So how about the first use case? Suspicious sibling peripheral ASNs. So our investigative process looks like this. So we, we start with domains or IPs. That's kind of the seed of, of the study. And then what you do is you go and examine these IP ranges, and then you try to explore the fingerprints of the hosts and see how the servers are being set up. And then with that, you apply the model we introduced, which is examining the siblings that are on the outskirts of the internet. And then finally, we'll see that we can discover some interesting related uh, suspicious uh, ones. So for that, we kind of monitored uh, some suspicious domains for, for a period of time. And then we collected uh, a sample of 160 IPs hosting the same kind of suspicious payload. And we saw like entire slash 23s and slash 24s that are serving the same type of payload. So you have like all of the IPs on that slash 24, they are serving the exact same payload. <clears throat> and it's labeled uh, like that on, um, by some AV vendors. Now, when we go and check those IPs, like we do a Nmap fingerprint, you will see that they are clustered in two kind of big components. One is you have 50 IPs that have the same exact server set up. They have the same Nmap fingerprint. And then another cluster with also the same kind of uh, server set up. So clearly, this case uh, is of a 
hosting infrastructure being set up in bulk to deliver this kind of payload here. Now, we consider the graph approach. So what we did is uh, we started taking, considering these IPs and then we um, you know, uh, got like their ASN numbers by doing the mapping from IP to ASN and then we built this graph here. So as you can see, uh, we have a lot of uh, siblings because they share those two upstream providers, the 48361 and 31500. And then you have all of the, uh, the guys below it that are children of those two guys. And in red, we flagged the ones that were hosting that suspicious payload. <clears throat> now this snapshot was taken from, and, and again, I didn't mention that all of these ASNs, they are in the uh, Ukrainian-Russian IP space. Just as a, an example here, we saw a lot of other similar cases in other uh, kind of uh, uh, regions of the internet. Now, this snapshot was from January of this year, and then we see the 10 siblings uh, and the two upstream providers. Now, when we go like a month and a half later in February, we see that one of the upstream providers kind of detached itself, so it stopped advertising the prefixes of its children, and then uh, some more uh, suspicious payloads appeared on other ASNs. So again, we see also that the guys behind this infrastructure, they kind of shift around. So one of the ASNs kind of stopped advertising. It might be, you know, either evasion or they received some abuse reports or it's just maybe a coincidence. But it's very interesting to see these kind of uh, changes and shifts happening, you know, uh, all the time basically. And as we see it there, more peripheral ASN started uh, kind of hosting the suspicious payload. <clears throat> so the, the summary of this use case here is that there were around 3,100 malware domains hosted on 1,000 plus IPs scattered across all of those uh, sibling ASNs and also on the upstream providers. And then we saw cases where the payload URLs for delivering this suspicious executable they were there before any domain started hosting, uh, started resolving to the IPs. So you could, if you go and do like a curl on the specific executable on the IP itself, you'll basically get the payload without any domain, uh, you know, being registered and being pointed to the IP. So again, that's kind of a, they set up things in bulk in advance and then they try to uh, wage the campaign later on. So that's like the interesting case here of applying the SPN model. Now we took this further, so we considered another case, and here we're talking about abused sibling peripheral ASNs. <clears throat> and it's kind of the same approach here. Uh, we monitor domains and IPs, and then we investigate the uh, hosted content and also the peripheral ASNs that are uh, sharing the same upstream providers. And uh, the seed, or the starting point was, you know, from the examination of all of the traffic we have, uh, I came across this one. 58271, it's a Ukrainian ASN. And then you can see uh, from one of our, like this is our uh, internal kind of research portal, as graph, and you see some of the uh, prefixes are hosting malicious uh, kind of domains. So you have a variety of things, you have spam, Trojan downloader domains, and also uh, Zbot FastFlux CNCs. And this one is a FastFlux proxy network with a typical TTL of 150 seconds, and it's been kind of talked about uh, for a while. Uh, we discussed it, discussed it at Black Hat and DEF CON this year with an extensive study of uh, how it's being used. But this was the starting point. This is not the interesting part here. Now, when we look at the sibling peripheral ASNs, so the one in orange, that's the ASN I showed in the earlier slide, and then we see that it has uh, a few uh, upstream providers. So it's pointing to 392928, uh, and then it's pointing to some other ASNs. It has one, two, three, four, four uh, outgoing edges. So that means it has four parents, let's say. And then among all of those parents, uh, there are a couple that are hosting malicious content. And then also it has a lot of siblings. So all of, all of the ASNs in red, those are siblings to this orange guy that are hosting uh, you know, malicious payload or being used for a criminal activity. And this was discovered by applying that SPN model, which is sibling peripheral ASNs that share the same upstream providers. Now, the breakdown of these kind of uh, harmful activities was the following. So, we, so this was a, a different case of the first one because the first one, 
the ASNs were delivering those payloads, they were kind of uh, destined to deliver that attack. So it's kind of maybe they set up those ASNs as fake companies, and then they started using them for the same campaign. Whereas in this case, the siblings of this ASN, they are mostly ISPs serving businesses and residential customers. So most likely we believe they are abused rather than being dedicated for uh, malicious uh, campaigns. And in this case, we see all kinds of attack activities. So we have botnet CNCs, we have Salty CNCs. So one of them is hosting IPs for uh, peers of zero access. And then we have a long list of, one, uh, of, of these ASNs serving as hosts, uh, you know, having IPs that are being used for the FastFlux proxy network for the Zbot, um, you know, malware. And uh, we see some others used, used for Trojan downloading domains, some pharma, some porn, some other malware uh, downloaders, and then finally also some Kilios CNC. So Kilios is another kind of a, a proxy network, a typical TTL of uh, zero. It's a fast flux network. And it has been also uh, kind of covered in the recent past. So we see that this entire kind of neighborhood of abused ASNs is quite interesting in delivering these kind of attacks. Now, let's get into the sub-allocated IP ranges, which is the kind of the second part of the, the study here. <clears throat> so, uh, the reason why I'm showing this is because we start from a big BGP prefix, and then we drill down and find that there are like a lot of smaller granularity IP ranges that are related and being used for the same attack. So, for that, we'll start with a study we carried uh, last fall and until the beginning of the year, and it was about nuclear exploit kit domains and the kind of IP infrastructure they were using. So for a long time, and this has been you know, studied by a lot of other researchers, uh, OVH Canada has been abused for a long time, and it's still being abused, unfortunately. They're doing a lot of good work to uh, fight that, but uh, the fact is it's still around. So anyways, uh, in this case, we have the same customer reserving uh, IPs, mostly slash 28s and slash 30s and 29s. So they are uh, usually smaller than the BGP prefix that the IPs belong to. If you do, you know, resolution by Tim Cumry or something, uh, you will get like the larger prefix. But if you check the who is of the IPs, you'll see they are reserved within very smaller ranges. And then these IPs were exclusively used for, the, for these attacks. And then we also observed that these IPs were brought online uh, in bulk. You will see, let's say, if he grabs 15 IPs or 8 IPs, he will just bring them all at once and then start the attack, you know, having exploit, a nuclear exploit kit uh, uh, landing, uh, landing pages hosted on those IPs and then, you know, use it for his malicious campaign. Now, later on, what happened is that after they got some heat from researchers, they shifted to Ukraine. So for seven days, they were using IPs in a Ukrainian uh, hosting provider. You have the details in the white paper. But in this case, they shifted from the Aaron because OVH Canada is under the Aaron uh, kind of uh, rear. Now it's in Ukraine, so it's uh, the RIPE. And RIPE usually doesn't have that much details about the uh, customer, customers reserving the IPs or the, yeah, the ranges. So here they were kind of evading uh, those heuristics that we used. And then in this case, they shifted their MO. So now they're starting to bring the IPs one at a time or in randomized fashion. And then that lasted for seven days. And then they shifted to another hosting provider in Russia. They kept the same MO of a customer unknown and then bringing the IPs uh, one at a time or in randomized uh, fashion. And then finally, uh, after uh, 15 days, they went back to OVH Canada. And in this case, uh, we were able to see again the same customer reserving these IPs. But th what they changed is that now they're using IPs that have been used before for, uh, I mean, benign content. So again, they're trying to evade reputation systems that are looking at fresh IPs used for delivering attacks. And you can see here like the TTPs shifting uh, continuously of these attackers. <clears throat> the interesting thing is that all of this period, the name servers were serving all of these domains, the nuclear exploit kit domains hosted on these IPs, they were still on the OVH IP space. So somehow they might think that the name servers are less likely to be detected as malicious, and it's more difficult to prove that the name servers 2LD is malicious because you have no landing URL to 
to say it's uh, used for attack, uh, you know, for an exploit kit or, or like a malware payload. So that could be also the, the, the way they, they are thinking. And this is basically how we have a clusters of nuclear exploit kit domains resolving to a single IP, and these are very ephemeral, so they will appear for a few hours and then disappear, and then you will never see them again. And then back in February, we took down a bunch of these domains uh, with the help of uh, Malware Must Die, the research group. Now, I had a video here about uh, Mr. T talking about predicting pain for, uh, for his adversary, Rocky, uh, but I don't have audio. But anyways, the, the point is, with all of this intelligence, uh, we can predict how things are happening. So I'll go quickly over this one. So looking at uh, several months of these IPs reserved on OVH Canada, and we see that a high percentage of these IPs are using for these attacks, are used for these attacks. So one of them was 92%. So during February, all of, the, all of the IPs reserved by a specific customer, he used them all for either browser-based ransomware, for exploit kit domains, or the name servers uh, authoritative or authoritative for the uh, exploit kit domains. Now, the interest of this approach is that if you look at those ranges and see the ASNs to which they belong by doing Team Cymru or your own kind of IP to ASN mapping, you'll see that they belong to very large uh, ASNs, uh, very large BGP prefixes. So the granularity is very coarse. And that, does, that doesn't give you much uh, kind of visibility into what's going on. And since the granularity is too coarse, you don't have uh, very good kind of tracking uh, heuristics in this case. Whereas if you look at the smaller ranges, how they are being used, that, that tells you, you can tie it with the reserving uh, customers and you can also look at how they are evolving over time. The other important, thi important thing we did is we fingerprinted these related IP uh, ranges. So in addition to being reserved by the same people, but sometimes if they are not reserved by the same people or if we don't know, if they are in the ripe, if we fingerprint them, we'll see that they all have the same server set up. So they will share the same Nmap fingerprint. And that was consistently happening uh, again and again and again. So the, the point is, uh, like it has been mentioned, criminals, they have to have a business model, so they have to automate things, they have to script things, and they have to do things in bulk so they can spend less money and get uh, more results. So using these two indicators, which is uh, reserved sub-allocated ranges by the same customers and also fingerprinting and seeing the similarities, we were able to kind of combine these uh, heuristics and apply this on other attacks. So we typically see every day a lot of these IP ranges having the same server set up and they will in the next few days deliver the similar attack. So sometimes if you find a seed and then you apply these indicator, indicators with, with some other kind of research uh, heuristics, we are able to block these IPs before any domain starts resolving and delivering the attack. So hence the kind of the predictive here, because you don't have to wait to see domains in DNS traffic. Just by exploring the IP space, you can just uh, quarantine these IPs or monitor them or block them, uh, you know, all the way. So you don't have to kind of be reactive in this case. So uh, the last part here is about this uh, growing trend which is, as we said, uh, these criminals, at least in the exploit kit uh, kind of arena, they have been registering and exploiting or abusing a lot of TLDs. <clears throat> but recently what we saw is that they started using uh, uh, compromised domains. So it's kind of a parasitic uh, relationship here. What they do is basically inject subdomains under compromised domains, and they make the subdomains point to IPs on uh, that are unrelated to the 2LD that, are, that is being compromised. And we monitored this for several months, and what we saw is that uh, these subdomains were serving either, either exploit kit uh, landing pages, all kinds of exploit kits, but also browser-based ransomware and also malvertising. And at the end of the chain, you have a lot of payloads being dropped here. So it's kind of very versatile and multi-purpose to use these compromised domains. Now looking at uh, a large pool of these IPs, we saw that, again, unfortunately, OVH is being abused. Uh, and then a bunch of other uh, ASNs. Uh, again, uh, since we mentioned it earlier, the ASN view tells you a little bit about the infrastructure, but it's, again, too coarse of a granularity to um, see how these bad guys are abusing the IP space. 
Now, this is just a graph of the most abused ASNs for, for your reference. It's in the white paper. But then this table here summarizes the TTP of the bad actors. <coughs> so before, the before means that, um, let's say, in, la in late 2013 and early 2014, uh, as we mentioned, they used to abuse a lot of CCTLDs, so PW, in .net, .ru, and they usually register the domains and use them exclusively for the attacks. So they will abuse either like lax or criminal, uh, either abuse lax uh, registrars or resellers, or they are working with uh, criminal ones. And then nowadays, they supplement that with compromised domains. So you have the two approaches here because they are supplementary. The second thing is that uh, they used to reserve the IPs exclusively for the attacks. Nowadays, they will use recycled IPs. So the IPs have hosted benign content in the past, so your reputation systems will just basically be blind. And then the other thing is that they used to bring the attack IPs in bulk. Now they realize that if you, they do it one at a time, just, just in time uh, uh, bring in the IP online, or do it in a randomized fashion. So again, your sweeping heuristics will kind of, uh, will not see that much. And then finally, uh, OVH Canada used to be abused uh, extensively, and that allowed us, in fact, to predict, because we see the uh, kind of the rogue, the rogue customer reserving these IPs, so we know if the slash 28 or 30 has a couple IPs being ser uh, serving this attack uh, domain, then we know all of the other ones will be used in the, f the next few days. However, what they do now is they use OVH Europe, which is scattered across multiple countries. And as we mentioned, the RIPE uh, who is will not tell you uh, most of the time the entire slash that the IP belongs to. So all you can see is basically this, the bigger prefix, which is a slash 17, slash 16, which, which is oftentimes, and, you know, and it's, it's useless because uh, if you have to scan entire slash 16s and you have thousands of them, uh, that's, that's kind of, it does not scale unless you're accepting to have, have a lot of complaints and abuse reports. Now, the thing is, uh, the other trend we noticed is that, uh, and again, this is about the granularity that is being finer than uh, bigger ASN. So we saw a lot of small hosting providers being abused. So this one is typically used for attack domains. This one also, they are, a lot of them are in the kind of Russian IP space. And then I have a few examples here. A bunch of them are in the uh, kind of white paper. So Bulgaria, uh, Russia, Ukraine. Some of them are in the uh, you know, uh, US IP space. So it's kind of a global problem here. It's not just you know, the Eastern European bloc. So that was it. I mean, in conclusion, <clears throat> and if you have any questions, you can ask me later. In conclusion, we wanted to look at uh, different uh, perspectives in exploring the IP space. So one of them was the topology of the ASN graph, and the other one was the sub-allocated ranges. And then with that, you can, the first approach, you explore like the sibling peripheral ASNs of uh, a seed uh, ASN. And then if you combine the indicators that we mentioned, you can uh, predict the IP infrastructure that will be used by the uh, you know, uh, bad actors or criminals. And then finally, the growing trend we saw is that Nowadays, they are abusing compromised domains and injecting subdomains and pointing them to unrelated IPs to serve uh, attacks. So that was it. And uh, I'll be happy to keep in touch or have any questions asked. Thank you. We have time for one question.